Hello again, everyone. It's Nick Mike Like and the amazing Steve Frazier. Thank you, thank you. Hello. And uh, we're, we're we're finally wrapping up the G- Jamie Lee Curtis Quad- slasher film quadrilogy. Quadrilogy in a certain way. <laughs> so, All right. Early '80s quadrilogy with. Prom night, of course. Well, yeah, because it's time for prom. We've done all these all out of order in terms of filmography, but it's fine. It's fine. Perfectly fine. So, guys, get your best tux and dress on and everything like that. Yeah. And enjoy our commentary for this. So, get your timestamp over to zero and side tiles turned on. And we'll give you countdown to sync up. So, in three, two, one, play. <clears throat> I believe this is another Canadian production, Yes, it was. Toronto. So, interesting. Um, Oh, Jesus. It's a little bright there. Good Christ. (laughs) I wasn't expecting that. Um, Me neither. That's like a a mirror image. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, got it. Um, So, she stars in Halloween, 1978. Yes. In 1980, she has three horror films come out. Yes. Um, we've covered Halloween, obviously. Yeah. Um, we've also covered Terror Train, which came out in 1980, a uh, great New Year's Eve movie. Yeah. Um, we've also covered The Fog, John yeah. Carpenter's The Fog, brilliant movie with my boy Tom Atkins. Yeah. Um, and the uh, release, release date structure is Halloween, then The Fog, which was eight, February of 80. This one came out, I believe, July that year. And then October was Terror Train. So she really had a great year. In the year that... The, yeah. it, it's also the year of us, by the way. Yes, um, yes. Both Nick and myself were born in 1980. Mm-hmm. Um, who doesn't love a good game of hide-and-seek in an mm-hmm. abandoned building? Abandoned building. That's a great idea. That also broken glass and shit falling on your head. Kind of looks like that saw set from the, fir- <laughs> the first one. It was shackling her up to the freaking pipe there. <laughs> Dirty toilets and <clears throat> such an odd game they play. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I mean, hide and seek's one thing, but it's like, you know, or or they call it just the fact that okay. I'm playing the killer. I'm coming to hunt you. That feels very odd to me. Did you just hide and seek? Maybe you'll put a little slight twist on it. But just, I understand the the them, thematic, thematic genre element of it. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd approach to the game. And we're to believe <clears throat> that, or not believe, but we are, hmm. we are supposed to learn. By their striped shirts, that these two are twins. Yeah, that's the idea here. As we get further along, there were alternate scenes for the television version they included on this, but I didn't get around to watching them. That there was like an extra scene where there that was explicitly stated later in the film. Oh, okay. Leslie Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Now, I wonder if <clears throat> you said that uh, sure. the fog, or I'm sorry, the fog came out first. Yeah, February that year. Would there have been enough time? Obviously, Jamie Lee Curtis made a name for herself in Halloween, so she got higher billing in the fog. Mm-hmm. But John Carpenter also did both films and had the ability to make her feel more prominent, fam- yeah. prominent than she, maybe she was supposed mm-hmm. to be. Would there have been enough time between February and here to inc- to bump her up as well, as second billing? Well, I believe when we get get to producer credits, it's the same producer as Halloween, Erwin, Erwin Goblin. Oh, okay. And it was apparently the whole thing that for the role she ends up portraying the film, they had a TV actress kind of marked for the role, but then Jimmy Lee contacted the filmmakers and wanted to audition for the film. So she was lobbying to be the, the main character in the film. Oddly enough, there's no producer credits here. Except for the exec producer, but apparently she was lobbying for it and the, the director, Paul Lynch, was very, like, he was very high on also getting her. She was like, yeah, c- come on down. We'll take a look at you and, and talk about the film and everything. So Is, <clears throat> if, if this... 
movie was produced in Canada, mm -hmm. wouldn't it fall under those same rules <clears throat> that Terror Train fell under yeah. regarding Canadian actors and only having so many above the, you know, in, above the line. So Leslie Nielsen, obviously not Canadian. Well, no, maybe he not. is a Canadian. Oh, he, he is Canadian. He said he was a Canadian actor oh. in the documentary. On this. Okay. So Leslie, I didn't know Leslie Nielsen was Canadian. I wasn't Canadian. aware either. I can double check it real so, quick. So that, okay, well then, Just, ja Jamie Lee Curtis, not uh, Canadian. No, it says Canadian actor. He was born in Saskatchewan. Interesting. I did not know. I didn't know this. Um, because those strange Canadian rules, mm -hmm. you know, that you got to have, you are only allowed so many Americans. Yeah, like two above the line American names, and then everyone else has to be Canadian just for I don't. Know, I think it was like a tax break or something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Uh, probably the case was. If there's a stutterer, you <laughs> automatically feel sympathy or something? Yeah. Huh. Kids are mean, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. If you want to <laughs> focus in on that aspect, yeah. It makes a lot more sense if they're just a bunch of dicks. And it really is kind of a weird game. Yeah, like I said. Yeah. I just think it's also weird. Like the it's 80s. It's very intimidating, yeah. These 80s clothes and this location. Like, when we were kids. Yeah. We could just walk into an abandoned building and, and play. Yeah. You probably need a tetanus shot afterwards if you fall on some weird rusted metal. <laughs> or <laughs> pierce yourself on a nail somewhere. Oh, shit. Mm. Now, as we know... Yes. Had she turned around and jumped from the no, window she herself, yeah. she would have lived. Yes. It is a universal truth on our commentaries. Yes. What a conniving bitch. Uh -huh. Let's just leave the scene of the crime. Yeah. Get her bikes roll away and like oh there's a dead body there. I well don't I'll care. well I'll pinky swear that we never saw anything. <laughs> and this one's gonna fall out just randomly. <laughs> um and that slit her throat even though she was still breathing, by the way. <laughs> Bad acting. <laughs> um and I would kill the child, your favorite. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> your favorite horror movie under huge trope. <laughs> but it was other kids accidentally causing the death of another child. It was, this wasn't an adult murdering a child. Mm. I had no idea he was Canadian. Um <laughs> <clears throat> Probably a lot of people from our generation are not terribly aware of, like, he was a serious dramatic actor before he started doing naked gun stuff and being kind of a a comedy actor, parody yeah. actor, stuff yeah. like that. I really didn't know that. I mean, he had a wonderful episode on Night Gallery. I, I saw that a couple of years ago. He was fantastic in it. This cop is really just going to roll up with a family member and... Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, here, lady. Let me take you to the scene. What, what was it, Nielsen also in Creep Show? Or, um, the one with Ted Danson, wasn't it? One of the very normal, <clears throat> the 
on the sand. You know what? I it's haven't been a seen, long time. I haven't seen Creep Show since I was a kid, and I don't it's, remember. It's been a good, uh, good long time. I, I'm flashing on vague things. I think so. Someone will fill us in. And is Leslie <laughs> Nielsen the father? The father, yes. And he's also the principal. Oh, uh, wow. Well, well, there's a bunch of convoluted shit. <laughs> a lot of stuff. We're getting... That's some bad English right there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So let's, you got to clean that up. <laughs> I mean, that's etched in stone, literally. Like... Right. <laughs> Gotta sand the whole thing down. Yeah, I mean, doing? you it's really. Like, come on. I mean, that takes a lot of come work on. to fix that shit. Kind of looks like Pat Patterson there. <laughs> it kind of does. <laughs> you coming up from Rio de Janeiro? <laughs> <laughs> he looks just like Pat Patterson. Yes, indeed. Just slimmer. Pat Patterson, also Canadian. Yes, he was. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He looks like Patterson from like 89, though, not. No. Like he's 10 years ahead. <laughs> Tucked in with no belt, you asshole. <laughs> no, no pal. No pal. Did they give this kid curly hair to make you think that he's well? He, the he, kid, the the kid, the Nick kid that. Well, I think it was the other way around because <clears throat> they wanted him to straighten his hair for the film, but when they got the shooting on the first day, it was hot, warm, and humid, and after they tried to flatten it, it just kind of poofed out all over the place, and they couldn't get it to work. So, I'm guessing the kid later on that they flat they were flashing around to. Had to curl his hair and oh, okay. Because this guy said he felt so much sympathy for the kid because he probably got teased like living crap for having curly hair. Yeah. Because kids will tease you for any goddamn thing. Well, they'll fucking throw <laughs> you out a window. Throw you out a fucking window. <laughs> or back you out of a window. They didn't actually throw her. There's a let's slap a sign on a brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> Little station wagon, man. They just don't make them like that no, anymore. No, no, no. <clears throat> it's like an old, it's an Oldsmobile. Is that even on? I don't <laughs> think so. We'll get to the Sykes guy later on. I want to have some comments. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm looking forward he to needs that. More, he needs more. He needs to be more established in the film before he say anything. Well, they did establish him as a character just now. Yes. A little bit. And the, this is all he is throughout the entire film. He's just there. Lurking? He's just there. What is... This is weird. It's a very weird edit. It's a bit artistic, yeah. There's no KO5 on there, man. <laughs> What's up with that? I think we, at this point, we'd, we'd moved past the... Uh... Oh. I'm, it's been a long time since we had a chance to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Get some 70s, 60s movies in here or something. Yeah, I want to say... <clears throat> probably... 77, 78... Was around the time... That... It shifted... You could start using the one and the area code mm -hmm. and call anywhere in the country mm -hmm. and not have it be like, you know. Prefix. Right. So, because they had switched to these kind of 10 digit. Mm -hmm. Now, not to say that you always had to do that because when you were local. Mm hmm. You didn't have to dial an area code. All right. Just dialing the seven digits got you where you needed to go right. as long as you were within range. Yeah. Because I remember, I remember as a kid, because we had uh, relatives up in Wisconsin we'd stay with, and 
I tried to call home because my mom didn't go with it, so I tried to call home. I was like, I didn't know shit about fucking area codes. I couldn't, right. couldn't call her. Yeah. <laughs> and if you did, there were levels of long distance. I'm sure there like, were. Like, there were bubbles of, if you were X like, amount of miles, yeah. it was this amount of dollars. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get expensive. That's why the 90s, they had 1-800 collecting crap like that. Sure, 10-10-3-2-1 and, and all of you know. that. Yeah. Um, which was... You know, a way to make it cheaper. Yeah. Um, Route your call and everything for right. a lower cost. But, so they still had these. Some Jesus on the wall. Look at that. They still had the localized area codes where you only had to dial seven digits at this point. Sure. But because area codes had really become a thing, they stopped with mm -hmm. the, you know, the Klondike fives, mm -hmm. the KL fives. I do like in in these little stalker phone calls sure, thing. Sure, sure. They flash back to the kid and flash back to the the modern day ones. So you can link everything. You at can least. at least see who's who. Yeah, right. There was one we were talked about had had young kids, then they had the adult ones where we weren't entirely certain which one. Right. Linked um, up. It was Valentine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which ended up. I mean, it. it, Being, it it not went as okay. consequential. You're right, right. Because I think it actually went in order of mm -hmm. the order they showed them as a kid. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, good stylistic move here. Mm -hmm. Woof. Kind of a homely looking couple here. <laughs> It was like the Black Christmas. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> it would be kind of scary to get a call like that. I mean, right, right. in today's day and age, we went through, we've gone through several phases here mm -hmm. where this becomes unlikely in today's current age. Right, no one will answer the phone anyway. <laughs> right, we went, we went through a period of caller ID. Right. For 10 or 15 just years. Call screening. Just let the answer machine take care of it. Well, that was first. First it was... <laughs> the answering machine was... First it was let the machine get Those were get fun it. days, weren't they? Then it was <laughs> caller ID, so you could you could decide to answer it or let yes, the machine get yes. it. And now, we nobody answers at all. No. No. Multiple lines in the same house. Mm. That was a big deal back then. Well, back to Black Christmas on that one. I've never been a fan of that sweater draped over the back either. It's a little, little bizarre. A little, a little preppy. Area code six one four something something something. Mm. So if you were outside of that area code, you had to dial the area code to get in. Mm. But if you were within the area code, you could just dial the seven digit number. Mm -hmm. Tony Caesar? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is an interesting subplot where we flash back and we have doctors and we have all this other stuff to give mm -hmm. kind of a red herring almost. Yeah. Now this actor, I swear to Christ, I know him from something, but I went through his filmography twice and couldn't find anything that rang a bell. He looks so familiar. The voice is so familiar. I have no idea who he is. Yeah, I, I'm not real sure. He's got a Kevin Spacey quality about him. Mm. Um, I swear. I mean, the only things I recognize like stuff I hadn't watched in 30 fucking years. Well, I get, this is 40 fucking years, so... 
Maybe. Well, no, I mean, stuff I hadn't seen since, like, 1990. Well, sure, but that <laughs> means that it was at least made in 1990 or before, so... Right, right, I'm just saying. You know, maybe... It's, it's, Stuff, he would, I, he would, stuff I barely remembered actually watching is the only stuff I right. recognized of stuff that anything I would have seen. So I was like, there's no, there's no like major credit that's like, okay, I've seen, I remember seeing that film a couple of years ago. <clears throat> yeah. Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> How many perfumes does one girl need, by the way? No. Nah. No, thank you. She's got at least seven. Perfume is one of the things that activates my asthma. No, thank you. I don't mind perfume if it's in moderation. Oh, the ladies who just bathe themselves in yeah, it, like, yeah. for fuck's sake. I'm 20 feet away from you. <laughs> there we go. Get lost, Lou. She's the one that had that terrible colored rainbow sweater. Oh. Ugh. She gets everything she deserves. <laughs> I'll land B <be> here. <laughs> she does have a great car, though. Look yeah. at this thing. Oh, yeah, that, there that, go, man. that is hot. That is a 70s sports car if there ever was one. That's a vet, I think. I believe it is. Yep, mm -hmm. sure is. Sure is. Absolute luxury. Back then. Is he wearing a collared shirt underneath this? Not him, but the other kid. Hmm. Why is she being coy? Mm hmm. Well, this dude, Lou, he looks... He ain't a fucking high schooler, man. Oh, no. <laughs> this guy is 32. <laughs> Smoking in the hallway. Jamie Lee Curtis, also old. Too well, old. Well, she always had that a more mature feel to her and look. Yeah. She's only yeah. like 20, 21 here. But I tell you what. But she, I she always felt a little bit more grown up than everyone else. She, this is, by the way, this scene here yeah. is in an era when if you didn't get asked to the prom, you yeah. didn't go to the prom. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, you, ain't, you ain't showing up alone. Hell no. No, it's not like a group of friends gets in the car and goes to the prom. That's right, just right, right. not. No, no, no. That's a 90s invention. Um, Lou is definitely way too old for everything <laughs> in this movie. But Jamie Lee Curtis is a 10 in, oh, yeah. in the entirety of 1980. Oh, yeah. This is her best year, maybe as a film actress and in appearance. Hmm. I mean, she still looks great today. Oh, yeah. She's, never, yeah. Looked, she's never looked bad, but good Christ. Yeah. Just stunning. And, I mean, and behind the scenes stuff she was she she was so proactive of behind the scenes she she took the the actor who portrays her brother in the whole thing she was like right on top of like okay we need to get bonded together we gotta go out we're gonna go shopping and doing all this type of stuff she was so enthusiastic about things when she was meeting her other co-stars she was immediately embracing them and getting involved with them, all the stuff she was so much on top of things I mean that shows again just Honestly, being in the family that she was, you know, the father and the mother and everything like that, being very prominent in that stuff, but she knew how to take that and, and forge that for herself and move forward and, and to be a very top-level professional, but still being very young and enthusiastic about everything. So... This is a fresh body found at the same site as the old yes. murder or mm -hmm. accidental falling yeah. from the sky. Yes. Okay. And they've set it up to make everyone believe that it's this 
sex offender guy, burn victim yeah. who's gotten out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And because he was a burn victim, he could have plastic surgery. He could look like anything. Yeah. All right. Now that we know the setup. This, this film indulges in red herrings. Yes. Yes, it does. With, with, <clears throat> which is where I'm getting with, with the Sykes guy. He's there the whole film just to be a red herring. He has no bearing on the plot at all. Well, you gotta have some right misdirection, right? But we we've touched on other films that did that a little bit more precisely. Well, even later on this year in Terror Train, mm -hmm. there's a lot. There there is some of that, yeah. But it's done well, and they did it under the guise of a costume party, which right, right. is very smart, brilliant. Mm -hmm. By the way, all of these are available. Go check them out. Yes, our commentaries are well well, well available. <clears throat> the Terror Train one in particular, I think, was very good. Yeah, Copperfield. We talk about David Copperfield mm. so much. We're both kind of in... We have a man crush on Copperfield. <laughs> a collective man crush. He's hypnotizing. And she apparently came in and did the whole dance uh, audition, man. She, she well, floored people all over the place. She's great. Speaking of floors, this floor looks identical mm -hmm. to that in the famous John Travolta scene in yes. Saturday Night Fever. Yes, well, we'll be getting there, man. All thick into that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the lurking that's, from that's behind. Some fucking moves, man. Oh, she's great. She's great. And she's, uh... Mm -hmm. Like, that's great disco dancing. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I love disco dancing. Mm -hmm. I love disco. Mm -hmm. And what, what is her beef? This is Nick's ex-girlfriend or something? Her boyfriend's ex? I think so. Okay. So... <clears throat> She's got a sliver of a sissy spacey thing going on. Yeah. The real smooth and, features <clears throat> thing. I would see no reason why somebody wouldn't leave this woman All to right. go be with Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, hell. In a hot second, man. Just look at that. She's, she's radiant, man. There's She's got that... I don't even know what it is. Confidence. There's something about her. Well, maybe it is confidence. Maybe. She's got, some con she's got confidence. She's, she's got a sparkle to her. I like the uh, psycho tearing out <laughs> yeah. pictures aspect yeah, of this. Good. Yeah. And you really only get one try. Unfortunate tri guy underneath there for the glasses. He didn't get. <laughs> you only get eyes. Oh look at yeah, that! Oof, no, oof. He looks like an ape. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a woman. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a woman. Oh lord! <clears throat> Damn! Look at the glow. The sunlight coming through. Yeah. I wonder, is that like an accident or and the fact that they spelled please on this thing B L E E Z uh, really come on. that really pisses me off. I uh, love the old Doritos yeah. logo down there on the mm -hmm. front. That's fun. Yeah, if they want to get rid of that glow that there is something you, there's this Hey, stuff. kiss poster. <laughs> oh. There's a kiss poster uh, uh, hanging. Oh yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, if they want to get rid of that glow, you could put up the called neutral density filters. Okay. It just kind of it's almost like shades or whatnot. Sure. Like sure. sunglasses for, for the window. It just dims it dims it down so it cuts the, the light. 
Well, they they didn't even have money for a steady cam on this thing. So well, sure. <laughs> They're a little little thin on the the resources. I can't tell what it says in be- un- in between yeah. the kiss kiss. Ah, for Christ's sake. But double platinum probably. Well, it looks like it says. I, it looks I think, like double platinum. It might say double platinum. Yeah, I think it's double platinum because that, that's when they re-recorded everything. And well, not everything. It wasn't mo- many of the songs, and they didn't go over terribly well. Double platinum. Kiss is my favorite band. Yeah. Double platinum is the very first Kiss record I ever purchased mm-hmm. um, because it was a greatest hits essentially. Yeah. Um, a couple were re-recorded. A couple were re-edited. Okay. Um, and then a lot of them are just as as they are. Mm. Um, Double Platinum came out in 1978, and okay. this movie is taking. Well, it came out in 1980. Yeah. And at this point in the Kiss career, they have had a pop record, a concept record that has gone nowhere. Mm, yeah. And they've changed two band members, all in a like 18 month period. Yeah. So they're not doing very well. It that Kiss banner is well outdated at this point yeah. in life. And look at this guy on the right. What a meathead. <laughs> oh, yeah. And old uh, Justin Timberlake wannabe here on the left. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, it's that's Leslie Nielsen's yeah. son. Yeah. And one half of the fr- of twin set yeah, that, yeah. that got killed. Yes. All right, I'm up to speed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trying to figure out what that flag is at the back. Um, it's got to be some sort of like state or provincial flag. Mm. I don't know where this is set. Yeah, I don't. I don't it's think a, they, there's just, a poster of the U.S., yeah. so it's supposed to be somewhere in the U.S. But yes. very peculiar. Like, is the movie studio? American and they used Canadian talent and you know like they yeah. went they went to Canada to make it like because mm. Terror Train is also set in yeah. the United States um yeah you know what i mean like it, if it's a truly a Canadian production why now, wouldn't they a lot have of these it? Canadian horror films try to make it seem um, it's set in America why why it's necessary i don't know well that's what i'm saying that's what i'm getting at is it an american movie that they just as if there'd be some kind of vitriol if it was right right actually set in canada like yeah why why couldn't this be set in toronto or something you know what i mean yeah i mean they filmed it there a lot of weird editing and flashbacking and cutting well we're getting a lot of voiceover from the cop here contemplating things trying to put different pieces of events together there but as if as maybe this wasn't the case in 1980 but as a viewer of horror films the fact that they are spending so much time telling me that it's this other guy doesn't that just alert me that it's not that other guy right 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 especially since you have a character who has a list of everybody that was involved in that incident right. on a notepad. Right. Why would this sex offender guy right, right, right. have a list of people that were at this... Exactly. Other than that his accident... Because we have, we have visual information that the other characters don't that informs us along a different path than what they're going on. Right. Um, and they said that this guy's accident or whatever happened right near there mm-hmm. so maybe he killed i don't know it's it's a little, a little shoddy but it's also a little bit of, it makes sense compartmentalized within the cop story he follows what evidence he has sure but it doesn't translate to the audience because it doesn't form up with the information we have cop doesn't know anything about the kid well, what happened with all those right. kids back then? Sure. He doesn't know about the phone calls. He doesn't know about the list. Right, but as a viewer, I can immediately rule out exactly. this this guy. Exactly. Exactly. Which takes away half of the Who Done It story. Exactly. It's not, so, like, it's not like My Bloody Valentine where they think it's Harry Warden the whole time, but we don't have any information to drive us away from that. We're all basically on the same track. 
Right. The audience is on knows the same amount of knowledge. This is right. why I don't like dramatic irony so much. Yeah, yeah. Um You know, if if we knew that it this was guy's ugly, man. Yeah, he is not good. No. Is she on roller skates? She why not? She's on platforms. I've been to one of those diners yeah. or that you pull up and the girls come out on roller skates. Um, amazing. <laughs> I just I have this nostalgia for it. <laughs> anyway, if this was actually this I keep saying sex offender. Is that correct? Did they say that? Yeah, they okay. said that, yeah. Um, I thought I read that. Yes. Um, if we knew that it was him and the entire movie, the cops were trying to figure it out, yeah. that would piss me off. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it pisses me off even more this way, I think. Maybe maybe not. <laughs> Where we know it's not him, but you're trying to tell me it is. Yeah. And it really just gives... Like, even if we know that it's not, and we're trying to figure mm -hmm. out which one of the kids it is, yeah. the whole point is that it's just giving the cops something to do. Right. And then, as I mentioned, the Sykes uh, janitor guy, sure. the caretaker, they just have him lurking around in certain scenes trying to make it seem like, maybe it's this guy. Oh, maybe it's actually him. Maybe it's actually him. But that's still... But he has still... no character other than just showing up and looking suspicious. But that still is more believable... Right. Then the other guy... He's an, that, un, he's an unknown quantity in the story, so that at right. that, that least has mm -hmm. more validity in, in everything, but because ultimately when we get to the end of the film, he just there's he basically no bearing on the plot at all, so he's just there to, to be a red herring and nothing else. Why would she do that? To, to, to give him a little show, or he doesn't seem very affected by it. Oh, maybe he does. Mm. What a terrible shot that was! Yeah, I kept thinking when I was watching, it's like I swear I've seen that that character being parodied somewhere else. I don't know if it happened in like scary movie or something else. I just swear that some other film came along and parodied that element. That could be. <clears throat> I don't remember. I don't recall. I just it just something that's it was one of the elements. It almost that I, looks like a parody here. Yeah. Because it's so oddly placed. Yeah. And so deliberately awkward. Yeah, yeah. That it almost feels I like I mean it, it was the one element one of the elements I still remembered from when I watched it two decades ago. Okay. That's right, you haven't seen this in twenty years yeah, yeah. prior to recently. Yeah. So that once and that was it. Now I'm back into this. Absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Here's more of this uh, ladies' locker room gossip mm -hmm. that we've kind of come to know and love in this yeah. series of shows that we've covered. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we haven't covered Carrie yet, by the way, mm. which was also around this time frame. Mm. What a scene that is nah. to kick off that movie. Oh boy. She's very breasty, chesty. She's wearing iron garments now because of the 80s. <laughs> well, yeah, it was 70s, probably, she, she, It was 50 50, I think. In the, in well, the well, 80s. well, at yeah. Halloween, she, well, she was loose and free, and then Halloween 2, they gave her a little, right. little, little, little support underneath. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let's slap a sign right on the... Just draw attention to it here. Girls change room. Unbelievable that that sign exists. <laughs> Here's where the perverts are supposed to hang out at. <laughs> right. Let's just advertise. <clears throat> they can just set up shop right there. <laughs> let's... Oh, my God. Are those bras hanging on the... Yeah, how? Who just hangs up your bra? I don't know. In a public school. A 
I swear in high school, some just knew the, knew the combination to my gym locker because stuff kept disappearing from it. <laughs> like my lunch money just, just disappeared. No one, what the fuck is stealing my shit? See, he's just lurking there. He's just there all the well, time. Because it gives him a reason to be present, I guess. Well, yes. But it doesn't give him a reason to have been present at the original crime yeah, right. that they covered up way back when. Yes. So, by default, <laughs> it has to be somebody that, that was we there. That actually saw in the sequence. Or somebody... As you saw, there was like a shadow over the body. Right, so I was going some, to mention that later on. So somebody was a witness to the whole thing. Yes. So I guess, in theory, that could have been the janitor guy. Mm-hmm. Definitely more plausible than this, you know... Burned up Burn victim mm-hmm. who has no bearing on anything. No, he's just thrown in there. Is she already telling them that they've won the prom king and queen situation? Uh, I, I suspect so. I don't. That do, how does that well, happen? Well, you uh, vote on I the shit. I don't know. Also, I think they're just doing like a rehearsal type of thing for it to stage it out. Which is another parallel to Carrie. Mm. Carrie's fun. We should cover that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. They're just blocking it out. Yeah. <clears throat> Stand-ins, so to speak. Mm-hmm. This guy's already got a prison record. What's he? <laughs> yeah. What's he doing in high school? <laughs> yes. He's <laughs> been here twelve years. He hasn't graduated huh. yet. <laughs> Kiss the king. Kiss the king. Where they will then s- disco dance, maybe? Oh, yeah. You should be dancing. I can't sing anymore. I would join you. Sorry. <laughs> I have to pick up the pace. Yeah. Somebody's <laughs> got to sing on this show. Oh, yeah. Oh. Lurky, lurky. Drake can only do middle singing. He can't. He can't be doing no disco, man. Well, see, I can. Well, never mind. <laughs> I could. I used to. <laughs> Was this a common look for ladies back then? This bus- like this jeans and a jacket situation. I feel like it's not. It looks good on her. All, oh, all yeah. I can tell you. It looks awesome. It looks a hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand. Yeah. Hundred million dollars. <laughs> She looks, Fuck yeah. I'm downgrading her for. <laughs> well, everyone else is, you know, 38 cents. So. 38 cents. <clears throat> I should rock this jeans and a jacket look more mm-hmm. often. Mm-hmm. I like it. Don't really care for the makeup, but I, I do like mm-hmm. her. I like her hairstyle that way. They, I feel like that last scene there um, with the rehearsal mm-hmm. was probably the most mm. that they've really talked about the prom aspect of this. Sure. So it's weird because I feel like... There'd be more setup? It would be more involved. It would The actual prom would have more... you think than, there'd be decorations promoting it to run the school or something like that? or. <sighs> I just feel like Something for it to be called prom night. Yeah. The point of the movie should be more based on the event. Yeah. It's almost like they were the next to jump on the craze of let's name the movie after the holiday or well, event. Well, that was the thing because apparently the original idea from the director was doing something, something about like a crazed doctor or something like that. Erwin Yalvin was like, okay. It's okay, but I, I don't really like like the gimmick. We go go saying it's like a holiday or something like that, and eventually came to prom night and developed it with our screenwriters and stuff like that. So I mean, it, 
And it's kind of the odd thing that <clears throat> Paramount was going to pick up the film, but they weren't going to put like a, a couple hundred theaters, and so they went with Avco Embassy, which was going to do a much wider thing. But then Paramount picks up Friday the 13th and puts it out in a whole bunch of other theaters. Sure, sure. And, and makes the whole damn thing, so... And Friday the 13th was really the beginning of the... Yeah, the flat, the, uh, the, the point where it just sparks off. Right. The uh, the holiday or event or... It made it a trend much more than anything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah, I just think, you know you could actually turn around and make a movie that's centered mostly around prom night mm. and murders happening at the prom. Yeah. To me, that's what... Well, again, My Bloody Valentine, it was start to finish all about Valentine's Day. Right, yeah. It was all over the town. Well, the whole point is that they hadn't even celebrated Valentine's Day in 20 years. Right. And, I mean, it was a critical plot point. Yes. I feel like the prom is not as prominent, haha, yes. as it should be. Mm-hmm. And the killings are only happy because it's, I guess it's like the anniversary of the, the death of the kid. And it was like six years or something. Yeah, so that's it was not six even years. not even a good anniversary. Yeah. That are we supposed to believe there's somebody there watching them, or was I'm, there? A, yeah, yeah, yeah there's like a yeah, shadow or yeah. something. I'm guessing so. It's not as well defined. Half of it looks like just bu bushes blowing yeah, the breeze. Yeah, right. Is it bushes? I is gotta it a look person? more on this. The right hand side where there's more. He's almost more deliberate movement, but yeah, it. They really should have, like shine maybe a back. A light on the character just have a little bit of an outline to, to differentiate. Oh, here we go. It was somebody in a car. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But lighting could have could have done, yeah. done a little bit of something to give a little edge light or something on them. Yeah, that was weird. It yeah, was very yeah. weird. This outfit not so great. <laughs> but. Okay for the time. Sure. <laughs> That's a good line. Oh, look at that uh, ice cream on the right there. That I was like, what is this, mm. this oh, yeah. thing that's you know hanging by her door mm -hmm. that says yum at the top? And then I realized it's ice cream. Mm. So... I would take her to the prom based mm -hmm. on this fact alone that she likes ice cream as mm. much as me. These two are the best two looking actors in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else is very not so great. Mm. There's that guilt face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dress didn't happen. Yeah, me. the dress doesn't... It, it's more old lady dress, really. Yeah. Was this... I don't know if the... And the pearls really don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's grandma. Yeah, no, no, no. I know she's grandma now, but then she wasn't. Well, she's cool grandma. <laughs> I do like that chair, though, with the stripes... That's nice, the tall back. Now, that dress is beautiful. That's, that's, that's a disco outfit, definitely. I love that. Is that like a Scarlett O'Hara figure on the on the lamp desk there? No, no, no. And a peacock on the table? <laughs> we probably won't cover Gone with the Wind on this channel. No. Yeah. Because it's four hours long. No. It is one of the best movies ever made, but... Mm. Simmer down, Aunt B. <laughs> Ohio plate. Well, there you go. There you go. Ohio. Look at you. 
Being a sleuth. I like <laughs> it. What the fuck is this? Yeah. It's not, it's not, they're not going to a sock hop. <laughs> Look like they're going, for, going to the football game. <laughs> no, they're going to smoke cigarettes and drink behind the bleachers at the at the at football. The game, yeah, yes. they're not going to watch the game. No, they're not watching the game. He's got a bottle of a Jack that he's sucking down like water. <laughs> That's what I would want my driver yeah. to do. If I'm, you're going to drive me to the prom. Definitely, <clears throat> definitely, drink half a bottle you're of Jack. Put any character in darkness. Do it to, do it, do it to this guy. He's just not photogenic at all. <laughs> he didn't have much on IMDb not even a birthday so I have no idea when, how old he was at this time but he ain't selling me like his early 20s or nothing that was, a, that was a good take there that they got oh, yeah. the garbage ran all the way across the street sure I wonder how many times they had to do that to get a good take mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey remember phone books those were a thing phone book. Phone books were hot in 1980. Yeah. Beat people up with it, you know? <laughs> only interrogation if you're, tool. Only if you're a cop, yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say. Uh, going, going through the, all these hallways with the lockers, just bringing flashes back, you know? Of you being in high school? It's only a few years ago that I stopped having dreams of still being in high school. Wow. <laughs> just I, kept coming back around for some stupid reason. I never. For fuck's sake. Yeah, there it is. There we go. Get it. I was made for loving <laughs> you, baby. That would have been really hot at this time. Yeah, I had yeah. Kiss, you know, kiss poster. Yeah. I guess the kiss ain't doing too hot at this time. Right. They're not. They're not kicking up on the top of the charts, man. They'll give you a deal on a do on a friggin' song. Cause apparently they shot all these dance scenes with like all the hits of the time. But it's like we can't afford any of this shit. So the composer had to create all these sort of sound alike disco songs for the film. And like a week and a half to do it all. <laughs> That's a pretty like good job too. Dancing we can't in the really moonlight. Tell it. Yeah. I like it. Dance, isn't this an actual song though? Maybe it's not. I don't know. It sounds like an, one of the songs. It sounds like a real song. They're not doing a very good job of mm -hmm. disco dancing. Nah. Though. Especially that kid. Too many white people here, man. You got no rhythm. Well, John Travolta sure danced well, like a song. Travolta son of a bitch. had some fucking juice, man. Saturday. I don't know when the last time you watched Saturday Night Fever, but I actually have not watched. I do have the soundtrack though. It is. <laughs> Of course, everyone has the soundtrack. Well, yeah, it was the best-selling, one of the best-selling <laughs> albums of all time. Um, Saturday Night Fever is a very dark movie. That's what I've heard. It is a drama. It is dark. It is so dark. Yeah. But the, tremendous. It's the disco so, stuff is the characters escape from all the shit that's going on. Right. Yeah. It is. It's heavy, man. And yeah. it's, it's great. It's a great movie. I've it, been I've been close to watching it a few times, and I never never got that. Got yeah, you. All the way up on it. You gotta, you gotta put yourself in a good mind though, because it's the 100 degree yeah. opposite of Greece. Yeah. Greece is so bubblegum and feel good. Oh, yeah. Saturday Night Fever makes you just takes you down, but mm. the soundtrack is wonderful. Mm. There we go. Oh, there's a gratuitous ass just for the sake of having an ass, and look <laughs> at this mustache. Oh. Fuck me. Oh no. Stash attack. Bad. <laughs> Oh, that was bad. No, no, no. That's, that's not good form. That's good form. She's doing all right, Dick. <laughs> Pat Patterson, not so much. No, no, no. Look at red suit over here. This red leather mm -hmm. outfit on, mm -hmm. on our on our left. Wouldn't it be weird to dance with your dad at the prom? Yeah, especially when she's doing all this gyrating stuff. <laughs> Ties crooked there. <laughs> what is that kid in the middle doing? Oh dear. Oh. And why is he not? He's the best looking guy <laughs> at the crowd. He why is he? Nothing. Why is he not dancing with somebody? 
Ah, oh, that dress really wins this red sequence. <laughs> Look at this. Christ. Oh hey. my god. Jeans with the fucking tux top? No, the cover button held out. No. That's no. a Steve Perry jacket. No, like, no, no. That's a Steve Perry jacket. He's though. wearing a white t shirt with the freaking bow tie. What the fuck? I <laughs> I love I do love the jacket. Come on. The jacket's <laughs> awesome. And the bow tie's awesome. The cover button. Jesus mother. There we go. Oh, here. it's called Prime. Yeah, it's a All right. Title song. Now we now we got it. Oh, here oh, we now go. Now we're going to get it on. Here we go. Here we are. Oh, I love it. It's like at a wedding when somebody, you know, you get two good dancers and everybody oh, yeah. circles around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this, man. I wonder how long they had to. Did they make this dance up? Did, uh, they, did I, they actually know they, these kinds of dances? I think it was the director saying his sister was actually a pretty good choreographer. So she came in and helped out. Because people in their age group would have gone to discos and oh, done... Oh, yeah. I was thinking, like, Jim Lee was probably doing this shit anyway, man. Oh, she Burning didn't... Burning it down, man. She did not learn how to do this for the movie. No, no. She knew how to do this. Yeah, she was hitting the clubs, man. I would kill... Ooh. To be able to do this. Now, I could learn, but yeah. it would be all memorization. I don't think I would get the natural rhythm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This little kick steps and... <laughs> and Oh, my God. It's just amazing. Ooh. I'm so jealous that people can do this. I don't really get jealous about a lot of types of dance. Mm. Except disco. Mm. I know everyone's real big into like the Lindy Hop and you know those yeah. kinds of you yeah, know whatever. Yeah. But ballroom dancing, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to me, this is entertainment. Oh yeah. I don't know if you could get away with you know upskirting somebody at the <laughs> at the prom. Yeah, nah. this is all high energy stuff, man. Yeah, you gotta get into a real fucking hot groove. And there, I just love everything about this. Oh, yeah. And the song really, you know, <laughs> for being a made up song, it, yeah, it's pretty it, hot. Yeah, it's, uh, I would listen to this. I wonder if you can get the soundtrack to this movie. I was wondering, I don't know. I saw a guy somewhere in the background. There he is, wearing all white with a with a hot pink flamingo pink tie. Mm. I thought that was a sexy look. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like all white, and I also like pink. So I might have to rock that at the next <laughs> wedding I go to. <clears throat> I don't know where I would get white pants and a white shirt. Mm. Uh, a white. Uh. White pants are probably hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Now. Maybe not so much then. Mm -hmm. Black guy ain't doing, ain't he, doing much, Yeah, he man. doesn't have as much rhythm, which is shocking. No, no, no. He ain't into it. This guy's at the prom with a with a corsage? Mm -hmm. Or a boutonniere, rather? A fucking cop. A boutonniere? He kind of looks like your boy uh, from Exorcist 3. Um, what, George, George C. Scott? Yeah, a little bit. He's got yeah. a little George C. Scott in him. I could see his face, but I couldn't think of his name. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Patton. Patton. I feel like, I will say... We're sure. we're an hour in. Yeah. There's been far too few murders in this movie. Right. I'm just thinking it's like this cop's really into this thing for one fucking murder. <clears throat> There's only. Right. I'm not dis dis disputing that in reality when that happens. But right. 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 This cop's all over the place. I I just feel like there's been like not he's chasing down a series of them. There's not a lot. Of, not a lot of action. Yet. Yeah. No. No. It's been heavy on story. That's a bad mustache yeah. on that guy in the middle. 
I know he's turned around, and we can I'm, only see it once in a while, but he's got a... That's bad. Hmm. I, I need me one of these Steve Perry jackets, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It is funny. Now here's what prom night's really about, right? Yes, yes. It's got it all. <clears throat> You're really gonna do this in the locker room or something? Hmm. Which is a very poorly dressed locker room because they have like helmets and towels yeah. and things hanging on the like, I don't know. I like that the subtitles are continuing mm -hmm. to show the, the lyrics to the, yes. the disco songs. What are you doing, sir? Mm. No means no. <laughs> yes, no means no. <laughs> no means no. Even, I don't know, he's got her dress half off here. Yeah. And now he's going for his own mm. pants here. Oh, he's going to force her. D oh, wow. Oh, oh, he's going to, whoa. Fuck, fuck you. Whoa. He was trying to. <clears throat> they really did a a good job of stereotyping mm -hmm. characters in mm -hmm. in the back in the day of yeah you know this scenario that you know uh the girl says no and yeah he blames her for like leading him on or you know it really yeah. it didn't do a lot for you know the male advancement here yeah, no 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 <laughs> It really just kind of made us all look like assholes. Yeah. We really aren't all like this, believe it or no. not. The I came here for one reason and I didn't get it, so fuck you, I'm yeah. going home kind of situation. Yeah. I feel like it just, they did that a lot mm -hmm. in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. It was a common theme. I get him in shot there. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. <clears throat> what a grainy shot that was. Yeah, that's weird. Slow. It's almost like slowed down in post too. Be bad. This looks terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And he slits her throat with a. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of the interesting thing where they shot the whole film, they put it together, and then they've realized the producers, producers say, well, we we got to spice it up a little bit more. we got to put more graphic stuff in there or something like that, or else we're going to get like a PG. Sure. And then it's not going to sell in 1980 as a PG slasher film. It's not going to go nowhere. So they had to go back and add more stuff into it to, to up the explicitness. Well, there really hasn't been a lot of violence no. up until this point, anyway. So I mean, maybe it's shots of them lingering, huh? This Kelly girl's the really the first one to, stuff. to get it, right? Well, yeah. other than from the beginning of the film, and that's there was, basically there was some whatever murder it was that sparked this cop, you know, at the old at yeah the, the, the beheading at the the, the warehouse thing at the plant, there. yeah, yeah, which was one of these girls or was not one of these girls. You know what I mean? If it was one of these girls, I'm sure there would have been discussion with the other characters about That's it. That's what I thought. I was like, nobody's brought it up that one of them died. Yeah. So, not only is he chasing a false lead on killer, Yeah. but he's trying to 
rectify a murder that is unrelated to I mean if that so, man's a rockin don't right. come a knockin basically you're saying the plot elements in the film don't link up together and we're spending time chasing things around that don't link to, link up to the main plot yeah because also up until like a minute ago there's been nothing with these characters to be involved with in that regard for a cop to have any reason to be here thinking he's chasing anything. That van was legit rocking earlier. Yeah. Insinuating that these two were involved. Mid coitus. Yes. And now he's fully clothed. Yeah. And nature is calling in the middle of it? Yeah. This, that doesn't happen. There's no Ohio plate. At least he only just took a few steps out there. He didn't, yeah, he didn't have to go nine go miles the, into the go, woods go to into take the a brush. shit. Yeah, what was there was it was Court was his name right in uh, in Jason Lives that hmm. owned the van. Uh, he was driving the RV. The RV, yeah, it was yeah. owned by the, the the girl's father. Look at all this like there was it a there was somebody all this, though like, that velvet or whatever the heck the guy going on this plush carpeting. Deal in here. Well, yeah, it's a it's a shagging wagon, right? <laughs> shagging wagon. Knowing what we know mm -hmm. is coming, it yeah. is it is very hard to believe that. The killer is always just conveniently where these people are. Well, because the killer just got the the girl in the locker room. Yeah, and then was it's shown a little sporadic where was, he's showing up. He was then shown seated or in the in the prom room, and now he's outside here in the in yeah, the woods. Little, like yeah, a little sporadic where he's showing up. It's not an organic flow where he's going. He just happens to know they're out here. Right. And they're going to choose to have sex on the grass as opposed to in the private van yeah, no. that nobody can see in. Mm -hmm. Tell me where the logic is in this. It's a very well lit area, too. Oh, well, yeah, there's like a street light <laughs> right on top of him. And why is his name Slick? Slick, nah. You don't give a, you, you know slick. You don't give a chubby nerd the name Slick. Michael Trito calls you Slick. <laughs> Wayne Grow. Checked in on her Jameson. This morning, I'm just registering that comment. <laughs> they just got together today? <clears throat> nah. Chevrolet got a big uh, push here, didn't they? Yeah, I guess they, so. They got their van in, they got their Corvette in. <laughs> yeah. And deal with a local dealership or something. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Rolling them doobies. 70s are so alive here. <laughs> well, the 70s didn't really end to like 83, oh, yeah. as, oh, yeah. we, as yeah, we've yeah, talked yeah, about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to think back to our, once again, mm. call back to our Halloween 5. And okay. ask if this killer has the ability to kill... These two people. Why well, is he lurking around so long? Why is he walking around watching them? Just get it over with. To fucking kill him. <laughs> <coughs> Michael Myers spent half an hour following everybody around. The fucking kittens and everything. Right. He should have just done the deed. <laughs> they were outside in the plain street light. Right. Just skewer them, get it over with. 
This makes no sense. Yes? I was watching this before. It's really weird because it's making these weird sort of vocal sound. But yeah, like there, a screaming. There's, there's no slicing sound effects. It just felt kind of like comedy kill. Like, I had to rewind it like, did he actually kill her? Or was that? Right. It just seemed weird to me how they designed that on an audio way. And the killer has this, like, all black suit on. Yeah, and then the same mask uh, Lou was wearing earlier when he was fumbling around in the, the uh, cafeteria. To make, well, for classic misdirection. Well, uh, even then, it's like, he's half the size of Lou. Well, we know that Lou... Is at the dance floor. Well... Making an ass of himself. <laughs> wearing tails and a... <laughs> and a stupid bow tie yeah, at Cumberbund. He got this kind of fashion sense, man. All black? <laughs> It's a slick get up. It's slick enough. But in just a minute, I bet we're gonna cut to yeah, the the same character in the dance floor wearing his tux. Yeah, sure. That's gonna be there. As opposed to him. Right. Oh, here we go. He. Oh, it's Eric a car. Uncle, Uncle Bluey. <laughs> That's in your top five. Oh my God. Your top five of critiques. <laughs> the car blew up. <laughs> Just blows up for no reason. In the midair. <laughs> it just oxidized into a fiery explosion. <laughs> oh my god. It blew up midair. <laughs> yes, it did. For no reason. Okay, in the middle there. He's he's getting into it, man. Well he's black. Yeah, he's got that shit going. Oh, well, yeah, probably, everybody's got a little rhythm. They're probably blaring <clears throat> some earth, wind, and fire. Or There's that bad mustache. There's our bad black dancer there yeah, in the back. Yeah, he's got nothing. Where's my guy with the with the pink tie? Ah. Uh, ah, uh, lurker. A drunk lurker. Mm. <clears throat> he can't. He, can't he, get get, a, he ain't got a comb to get a good hairstyle. There we go. Oh, Lou. He ain't gone nowhere, man. What the fuck is with this outfit? It's all it's scuffed a, up. It's tremendous. Well, it's, why is it all scuffed up now? To make you think that he was outside rolling around in oh, the, no. in the dirt. All. Oh, left side there? No. <laughs> That's my mustache guy. No. With the, with the mop, mop of hair. Awesome. Looks like Frank Zappa in a bad wig. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Look out. You don't need any more, bitch. You got too You're much. You're overdone. <laughs> Wipe that air. Wipe some of the ice that off. <laughs> overdone. It's a little thick. Oh. <clears throat> you don't need more lipstick. <laughs> You don't need anything. Wipe that clown paint off. Yeah, again, he just shows up. And now he's back over in... in starts off in, in the school. Then he goes off into the middle of the woods. Now he's back in the school again. With an axe. He found an axe somewhere. He didn't have an axe a minute ago. He's padlocked the door. Well, sometimes they did that at schools. Highly illegal, in my opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> when you have people here, you pluck it off fire I mean, exits. Well, yeah, absolutely. Is it That would never fly. <laughs> Even ten years after this, yeah. I would bet. Why are those down? So she can fall on them. <laughs> oh, great answer. Thank you. We have need convenient plot setups. Like that equipment doesn't just stay out. No. Hell no. Should have bounced off it, man. Yeah, that would have been great. Get, get a little action in there. Cool would be if you just bounced off and just flying at her with an axe. Come a on. flying axe, right? That's why we need Tony, man. Well, Tony Caesar's got to get got to get the stunt game going here. I mean, we would really be. 
criticizing the hell out of it. <laughs> if he jumped off a trampoline and then that'd be awesome. A flying axe handle, like no, Macho awesome. Savage. Fucking wet, Macho. <laughs> Double axe handle off the top. <laughs> this shot. This is probably. I bet that's where this is where they stole the other shot from. They just, just copied slowed it. it down. They copied it. Yeah, they, they because, just probably took footage from this, slowed it down, and slapped it on the other sequence. It looked clean there. Yeah. That's a cool shot. Yeah, with the yeah, eyes. Yeah. You the can, reflection. The, yeah, yeah, that was Nicely awesome. Done. I like that. Yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful little little mm-hmm. trick shot there. I don't know what they could have done mm. to, to tighten this movie up, but mm. all of the action took place is starting to take place after the one hour mark. Yeah, yeah. On prom night, which is fine, like right, I was complaining right. about earlier. But I just think they could have tightened up that first half. Yeah. To make the events of prom night more prominent, as I said yeah. before. Pun intended that time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Cut out the cop storyline then. Because, well, yeah. Because the only detail is kind of superfluous. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to red herring, let's red herring the janitor. Yeah. Which they're they're doing. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, whoever they got with the stunt guy in this, this thing, man, he moves, man. He can haul ass. Like auto shop when you actually have a real uh, a real auto in there to. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I don't think they do that anymore. Uh, I don't know if they. I don't know if they had it at my high school or not. We. I'm not familiar. We had auto shop, but I never took it because it was mm-hmm. like an elective, you know. No. <clears throat> you could do like you know woodworking kind of thing yeah. or. Um. There were all kinds of electives. Yeah, I did like a graphic arts class where you like to build film itself and all that type of stuff. I did nothing. I just took English and math and science and history. I took art classes. Faint banging is a great (laughs) subtitle. (laughs) It's what was happening out in that van prior to... (laughs) <laughs> Maybe, because he still had all of his clothes on. He's banging away some enchiladas. <laughs> uh, gotta love some enchiladas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they're really hardcore on this whole Ohio thing. Well, the, I mean, that's... They've shown you where it takes very, place. Very, very consistent. Yeah. A lot of films <laughs> aren't, aren't terribly concerned with that sort of continuity. You get the phrase, that, oh, it was all in Ohio all this time. You, nice time to tell us. <laughs> yeah, they did just kind of pull that out of their ass, didn't yeah, they? For no reason. Anytime you need a... Um, Anywhere town mm-hmm. America. Mm-hmm. It's always Ohio. Like, There's Ohio. No one knows what the fuck is in Ohio except, you, except if you live in Ohio. I mean, Ohio's got a bunch of good stuff, but mm-hmm. at the same time, it's just like, it's the perfect middle of nowhere, every, every town, yeah. every town state. It's like Indiana, it's all flat land. It's kind of. Nothing. Indiana's well, the worst state. Iowa's Indiana. cornfields. Wisconsin's got a lot of forest. <laughs> we got a little bit of everything here in Illinois. A little bit. Is she like sweating? Is that what's happening? I'm guessing so. I'm crying. Now you need more mascara. Yes. Idiot. (laughs) 
It would be terrifying to be chased by an, uh. Uh, an axe-wielding maniac. Uh. I hope we get a good axe payoff here. I don't remember. <clears throat> I know you just saw it. That shot's even more clean. Yeah. It looks identical, though, to the, the other yeah. ones. At least the four in the reverse shot is, is consistent there. Why that insert shot of the blood? Yes. It's a little much. Indicating that this is dripping from somewhere nearby, and she has not seen it yet. Hmm. Is what I would gather. Hmm. Oh, is it red paint? Nope. Arms just randomly dropping. Mm. Well, that's not a good yeah. payoff. No, no, no. You spent 20 minutes chasing the bitch around with an axe. You're not even going to show me the payoff? No. That's... Show me the money. <laughs> Again, the, like I said, they, they went back in and add more stuff. They didn't add in nearly enough. Yeah, see, what, 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 I don't... What do you have involvement with the prom anyway, pal? Why did you think that you needed to be at the prom wearing your boutonniere? Right, right, What? what's the deal here? You... I don't, don't understand. Oh, why is this, <laughs> this, there's so much dramatic overacting here. Yeah. And of course they're going to dismiss him because... Right. Good. Not that they made it any bit fucking apparent because I even missed it when, when we were just in the scene. Apparently in the scene where she goes in the in the closet there, when they have this sort of panning shot over there, apparently he's in the room, but he's completely in shadow. So you can barely, under, barely notice that he's there unless you already know from the trivia on IMDb that he was actually in the scene. Okay. So he's in there, in the closet, in the dark, watching, watching all these things happen, but not doing anything or reacting to it in any type of way. I didn't know that. Exactly. And I'm just watching it right now. I and watched it last night. I had to rewind the film back to look at, to find the shot in the whole thing, because someone mentioned on IMDb Trivia. I could see <clears throat> missing it on the VHS copy right? and catching it on the Blu-ray, because that's right. happened to us before, yes. where things have been so clean and crisp... Then we go, oh, wow, I never knew that was there. Right. Again, it's kind of, kind of earlier in the film when the guy was sitting in the car and it's like it's just a big blob of right. black on the screen. Right. There's no, dis there's no distinguished shape <clears throat> to notice that. So when you cut to this guy saying, kill her on the loose, kill her on, kill her on the loose, what? Well, How does I, he know that? Where, where's that connective tissue? I've always just chalked it up to him being drunk. Right. And maybe he saw something somewhere. Right, but but it's still, it still it doesn't. They didn't do a great job to convey that clearly to the oh, audience. Oh, exactly. I'm I'm not disagreeing because at all. you did fucking notice it. I, you're you pay more attention to each shot than I was. I kind of half of this movie's been in shadow. Yeah. That's a terrible crown. Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> and that's it's that's an okay crown, but it doesn't fit. No. Any like they where do they find these at Party City? Fuck. Jim Duggan had a better crown. Oh yeah. And it was all crooked on him, too. <laughs> oh, shit. 
I do like the axe gimmick, but I wish that he'd used it the whole time. Yeah. At least puts keep some fucking blood on the, the blade there. He just murdered somebody with right. it. Right. <clears throat> so you go... When you go to the shower and clean it off? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I'm getting thick on it now, man. That's a child's yeah, that's crown. Yeah, it's not working. And these lights are not good. <laughs> they little... gotta they gotta figure out how to shoot them better. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird oh. little, <clears throat> weird little runway they got going. Jesus on. Christ! And this like oh gee why? <laughs> Stop please. Now this is fun. It's a nice little shot yeah. here. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Now that's a payoff. Yeah. And there's blood all over the axe. Okay. Well, that's a good head. That yeah, that's that's great. I think they probably just put his head up through a hole in the. Well, I, I know they used his real head. It might have been on the close-ups. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely up through the hole. Yeah, no, yeah. Which is an old school I know they trick, said that, but they that, did have an actual prop head. But that was probably more just for the the cut and roll down the For like the that right there, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. The close ups you was definitely the real yeah. person. I'm still not entirely sure why why the killer got knocked on his ass. Yeah, I don't know either. They they kind of cut around that. That's a prop real head. Fast. That's a really gross, yeah. stupid yeah. Rub, rubber head. <clears throat> sure, all the blinding lens flare comes into your favor. Well, it also makes me nauseous <laughs> and it makes me like want to like legit fucking like JJ Abrams here and like close effect. my eyes. I want to. <laughs> I want to. I want to look away from oh, this. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You it's know what I mean? Not happening. In full seizure mode here. Kind of like the end of uh, Halloween Six in the mm. hospital, or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With the strobe for like yeah, five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theatrical cut. Like I legit want to turn my head yeah, away. Yeah, we're from... a little too close for the to the screen for this. It's very annoying. <clears throat> Maybe if you're in your living room and you're yeah. far away, it's fine, but... You need some distance on the screen for this. Holy Christ. I gotta, like, look away for a minute and get my... Get the lens flares... <laughs> Christ. Oof. Are you gonna swing that thing or are you gonna stand there all day? <laughs> Trust to make sure she hits the right person. Well, swing now. <laughs> there you go. Ow. Well, <laughs> if she didn't hit, why didn't she hit him with the axe handle portion, the blade portion? If she hit him with the back end, he'd be concussed. He should be knocked out, yeah. And... Uh. Oopsie. I know those eyes. Yeah, he'd be unconscious. Yeah, he's not. He wouldn't be functioning. No, not at all, man. I'm barely conscious after those strobe lights. For God's sakes. I like the little blood coming out of the eye. I think that's that's a nice touch. Mm. It should be more, but yeah. He is wearing a mask, so, you know, that's fine. Kind of strange, okay? He's flashing back on events within the building that he wasn't present to witness. He wasn't there when they're... Right, right. ...going down the hallway, shouting <clears throat> that stuff. Yeah, you're right. You're right.
Everything's faint in this movie. <laughs> she had faint sobbing. <laughs> he did not see it all. No. He showed up at the end. He probably saw them leaving the place on their bikes. Probably saw her fall from a distance, but he wasn't there to see what happened inside the place. Yeah, he wouldn't have known what they were yelling or mm-hmm. chanting or how it happened. It was on the second floor, for Christ's sake. Yeah. That's it? He's dead? Yeah. Now? Yeah. He's still moving. Yeah. God damn. Well, she's amazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> she's got the tears. Oh, I hope the black one dry- drops. Oh. The mascara tear is so good. Oh. They should have held on that just a smidge longer to, yeah. to get the full effect. That's it? Yes. <clears throat> okay. This is definitely the weakest of the trilogy yeah, of yeah, the yeah. 1980 trilogy. Um, so the low body count for one is only about what, four people that that the killer actually kills. Sure. Okay. Um, only, there's only four slasher kills, and then the last twenty minutes of the movie. Yeah. The story on this one is really not great. Yeah. Uh, it tries. Mm-hmm. But it falls short on so many levels. Mainly the, mainly because of the the story, the cop story that doesn't need to be there. Well, yeah, the cop's not even there at the end of the goddamn movie. He's got no resolution he's, to the story. He said he wanted to go enjoy the prom, and he never even... He just disappeared. We, we never saw him again. Yeah, it, it's, that's a waste... <laughs> Especially where you got the psychologist doctor there, he's n- pointless in the whole film. He doesn't yeah, add anything. Exactly. Um, yeah, I. Oof. I mean, okay, the brother saw it and right, 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 right. revenge. Okay, okay, that fits together. Fine. I'm okay with yeah. that. Um, but if we're if we're gonna be talking about the the three Curtis movies from from the year. Yeah. I definitely think this one is the weakest. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think I don't know which of the other if Terror Train of the Fog is there's they're very different. Yeah, yeah. They're very different types of movies. Yes, yes. Um I love both of them. Mm. I really do. Uh and I I'd almost I, the Fog might be a better movie, but I think I like. I think Terror Train has more rewatchability for me. There's maybe more sizzle for you a little bit. Um, the Copperfield, the mm-hmm. the cost, the Who Done It aspect. Okay. The Fog is a little more supernatural, mm-hmm. which I tend to shy away from. But it being a John Carpenter, and it's got Tom it, Atkins. It's and got a Atkins. Score. It's right. The score. It, it looks uh, great. On the whole, it's a better movie. Yes. So production values um oh yeah so i think i guess if i'm ranking them i'd say fog by a nose Mm -hmm. then terror train and then this Mm -hmm. is the third by Mm -hmm. with a bullet yeah yeah. for me yeah yeah i i don't know maybe you have more separation between the fog and terror train than i do but i i think they're really close okay for me but I'll, i'll give the nod to the fog okay yeah yeah i mean fog does a lot for me, man. Just yeah, the, it's, just the value that it has. I can go back to that and get the mood, the atmosphere, the whole thing. I really, I really dig that approach with suspense and atmosphere. But hopefully, uh, everyone here uh, if, has if, a is a good prom. And uh, if you added Halloween yeah. two into the mix, oh well, where would, ooh, where, Halloween would, no, Halloween two is still. Uh, I'd put Halloween two above this. Okay, but. Still below Terror Train. Okay. Uh, and obviously Halloween 1 is... Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, that's yeah, not that, even in the That's not even... No. It's far above the conversation. Yeah, so I'd go I'd go Fog, Terror, Halloween 2, Prom Night for, okay. for me. All right. Well, we'll have a playlist of, of these films. Okay, that to, sounds great. Um, have that flavor of variety. And we'd love in your comments, please comment. Tell us 
what, what your ranking is. Yeah, tell us stuff. your tell us. Yeah, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on yes. that. Rank them. So. All right. Have a good prom. Take care. <laughs> See ya. Bye bye.